Well, Eric, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. Uh, I know we don't have too long here, so you know, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The 2014 World Cup comes at a very interesting time in terms of the growth of the sport in the United States. Uh, over the past four years, we've seen more matches being broadcast to our TVs. We've seen our leagues expand, the MLS, the NASL, all growing um, in terms of numbers of teams. With this growth in mind, how important do you think the performance of the United States squad will be in this year's World Cup? In other words, if they do well, what are the chances of us you know, getting the casual soccer fan or even the non-soccer fan interested in soccer? And on the other side of that, if they crash out early, do you think that there could be a slowing down of this popularity growth? How are these two, if at all, going to be connected? We are judged every four years on where we are with the soccer nation. Now, most countries, whether that be like a Portugal or, or Belgium right now, is having a, uh, a good couple of years where they have you know a, a team that, that everyone has really high expectations for. Maybe even Chile could be a team like that. We saw it last that's more around with Uruguay. Most countries aren't on this fast track of growth. Most countries have already kind of maybe even hit the ceiling already as far as fan support or things of that nature. But what ends up happening is their country, their countries um, get excited about the idea of, of, of having a wonderful World Cup. Uh, for us, we're always just kind of sitting there waiting to see what happens. And we rely a little bit more on good fortune than, than the other teams. But the reality is everybody does. Everybody needs a little good fortune if you're going to have success in the World Cup. So I think we're going to get through the group, which is probably your next question. I do. And, and the reason why is because... Uh, too much going on in that first game with Ghana, and, and, and if we can pull off a victory, and Ronaldo limps into that second game, uh, everything's on the table. I, I think we have to recognize the opportunity, um, and you know, put put together a good performance. The the other distractions of Landon and all that other stuff um, might end up bringing this team together. But uh, it's a way to see. It really is. And, and, again, I've never seen this country this excited about the game. I've never seen uh, this kind of fan support. And any, if we're talking about the casual fan, uh, Americans don't get it if we don't win the whole thing. That, that's just their mentality. They, they're, they're learning and as they go. The clock is a little different. But uh, <laughs> you're quote didn't help, we're not going to win the World Cup, which was uh, probably not the smartest thing to say for the American people, especially the casual fan. Uh, some of us understood what he meant by that, but not everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, just like you mentioned, there's so many narratives coming into this World Cup, whether it's the, the difficult group stage, whether it's omissions from our roster. A lot of people are saying that this was going to be the time when Jurgen was really going to be evaluated. And, you know, the success that we saw in qualifying was, that, you know, this was going to be his big test in, in whether or not he had a, what his future would look like with the United States. Now that we got this difficult group draw, we, we kind of see the other end of it where, where a lot of people are saying he's going to get a free pass. Like, you know, okay, this is a, a difficult group stage. Do what you can. Does Klinsman get a free pass for this World Cup? No, no, he doesn't. He, and he shouldn't. Look, he's, he's really, if, if you notice, as soon as we we, got, we saw the draw, he's a, he's a very business-savvy guy. And he basically said, you know, it, it's unfair. I think his argument is it's unfair for me to be uh, evaluated with this group going against Portugal and, and, uh, and Germany and Ghana. That, that, that's unfair. So, so what did he do? He immediately negotiated for four more years and changed things around quite a bit. And he has got his people around him now. He, it is a it is a, a whole new look federation, which concerns some people, but if he does not succeed in this World Cup, and it'll be from creation to the because um, we all have different opinions about what exactly determines whether the World Cup is successful or not. Um, I'll just tell you this. If we don't get a win, if we do not win 
a World Cup game, uh, he will probably be let go. Definitely. And, and, and he has come in, you know, I don't want to sit here and talk about Donovan all day, but, but he has come on under a lot of fire and things like that and other roster decisions. But one thing we see with this roster is we've kind of got this mixture. You know, we have our veterans. We've, we've got Dempsey. We've got Bradley. Um, but then we do have a lot of young talent. You know, we've, we've got Brooks, Yedlin, um, Green. Who do you think is going to need to step up and, and be the bigger talent? Is it going to be these veterans or is it going to be these big the, these World Cup rookies? Who, who needs to shoulder, you know, put more weight on their shoulders? Well, if you would have, if, if going back to 2002, Atlanta's first World Cup, I mean, the, he was a rookie. Mm. He, and, and he just kind of went out there and had no idea really what to expect. Uh, he, won, he won a lot of foot races. Obviously, the, the, the own goal against um, uh, Portugal, which, you know, just the whole first half performance against uh, Portugal. It was guys like Beasley. It was guys like... Donovan, who we're making happen, that's very similar to what we're looking at going into this World Cup. A guy like Grant Duke is a little older. Um, but, you know, there's got to be something bigger about that for him. You to walk into your first World Cup and if you run a little faster, you're thinking a little quicker, you're going through a whole sheet of emotions. Um, we'll find out in a hurry um, how good we're going to be. I actually feel that this team will, will play a lot better than expected. Uh, especially in that first game, because one, we need to, um, and then you, like you said, I mean, right down the spine, you do have enough uh, experience with guys like Dempsey, Bradley, and Howard to, to be the, the calming voice uh, in the locker room and probably get us through those first 20 minutes. So I'm a little bit more optimistic than most, and then that's mainly because I, I just, I have a stronger belief in the American player that and I, I guess that the, the general public does. Yeah, and, and uh, th- this next question I want to ask you is, is mainly so we can segue onto another topic with, uh, you know, the discovery of players. But, you know, Julian Green has been a huge buzzword coming into this World Cup. He's been a big part of the narrative. And uh, the camps are kind of polarized. There are some people that say, you know, he's the X factor. He's going to be this talent that can step up and really put us through while the other side of that, people are saying, you know, we're going to see him come off the bench once in a while. It's good for him to have experience now for the future, but don't really expect a lot out of him. Where do you think he falls in that spectrum? I do think he's a sub. Um, I think it's an enormous amount of pressure to put on somebody um, so quickly. But the other part of that is the kid that got minimal minutes um, but he's still a part of a big club, and Brian Munich, playing for Brian Munich, being a part of that, uh, being part of that club, you understand the importance of training. You understand the importance of you know, representing something that's a hell of a lot bigger than you are. So that integration should be a little bit uh, on paper. It should be easier, uh, you know, for him than most. But man, he looked nervous against Turkey. Uh, there was. There was times where I, I, you know, you feel for him because he, he he's caught in, in, in that, that that conversation that you just kind of address. Who am I? Am I the, am I the lightning rod? Am I, you know, do I have to prove it to everybody? Do I have to prove it from the start? From, you know, what do I do? Who am I? How do I help this team um, in the best way that I can? And that's really going to come down to how Jurgen manages his mind. And... You know, they, they obviously know each other well enough. Uh, you probably can stand up for you have a high opinion of this guy. Uh, and everybody wants to talk about the future because that's what you do when you got a young guy like that. You just keep talking about, well, in the future he'll be this or he'll be that. Um, so just right now, it's, it's the World Cup. This is, you don't have a choice anymore. We can't talk about the future. We can't talk about next week. We have to talk about tomorrow. So, um, yeah, absolutely. And then the, the real thing I wanted to get out with this, you know, obviously Green is a guy, you know, he's really young, he's 19 years old, he was recruited very heavily. But in terms of, of how we typically find out that talent, and I know that you, you've spoke to this, you know, some in the past, but 
the current system we have in the United States of really seeking out this talent, you know, we, we rely very heavily on colleges. We rely very heavily on these traveling teams. Do you think the current system we have in place is adequate to really discover that next talent? I mean, what happens to the, to the kids that can't afford college? What happens to the kids that can't afford to be on these traveling teams? Do we have a good system in place for identifying the next big set of players in the United States? No, we're nowhere, we're nowhere here. That was the logic of bringing in Andy Hartog because the infrastructure that exists in Europe is far more organized than what we have. So he was able to take a few phone calls, some of his friends, and find some guys that might have been playing in the local division, some guys that, that were working their way up, some guys that were about ready to sign a big contract, Brother Brooks, the Timmy Chandler, guys like that who... Uh, Fabian Johnson, who, who are guys that, that are definitely good enough to play on the U.S. team, but my argument would be instead of going across the pond, finding guys that you know are, are a part of uh, of this machine, it, it might be more advantageous to figure out a way to start looking in some backyards here in America. That there's a lot of passport Americans possibilities that we are overlooking on a continual basis. I have one on my team right now. I, I'm not afraid to talk about him. Um, his name is Poku. He's from Ghana, but he got married to an American girl. He's American. He, he, he's American. And he's 21, six foot one, and he's one of the best soccer players obviously in this league. He's, he, he might be too good for the MLS too, but there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, we had a um, Correa. He used to play for the. Um, I mean, Correa. He played for Santos and played in Mexico for many, many years. He trains with us every once in a while. He came out to our training. Uh, he's been out with us for about a week and a half. And the first thing he said, he goes, "That guy can play anywhere." Holy cow, that guy's good. And I said, "I know." And he goes, "Who is he? Where is he? Where did he come from?" And it's, it's like, he literally lives down the street in Atlanta. He just happens to be living here because uh, he had school visa, student visa, uh, that expired and he needed to figure out a way to stay in this country. I mean, he's here and he's legal and he's good. And, and, and I know that sounds crazy, but to be dumb if this guy was not involved in our program um, in the very near future. So, so what changes do we make to to get players like this, you know, in the proper training and the proper channels that they need to be in? You hire the right people. You hire the right people and you stop being lazy. Stop being afraid. Don't, just because you got an email that said that you got to put your jacket on and go to some Division One game, don't be afraid to talk to people and find out the Division Three game or the, the Mexican League game in East L.A. that happens to have this 20-year-old kid who looks pretty good. And people say, yeah, 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 but this, but this, and there's a million reasons not to give him a chance, but um, there's a million reasons to give him a chance. So we, we miss the boat a lot. Our coaching in, in this country is not good. Let's just say that. I, I think the best way to categorize it, if you will, is the moment that we discover a player that he's finally been discovered by the, the, the powers that be in this country is the moment that we start destroying him. That's what happened. Nobody wants to admit it, but we've got a bunch of coaches who overcoach and turn players into what they, they want them to be as opposed to letting them become who they are. And that's just lack of knowledge. That's just, that's just power trips and PowerPoint presentations that are dictating the show right now. Not enough. There's not enough soccer minds out there making soccer decisions, which is really sad. Yeah. Well, Eric, just a, a couple more quick questions for you. Um, one is, I guess, just looking a little more towards you. You've obviously seen a lot of success in your career, both on and off the pitch, and uh, you uh, you were the leading goal scorer for the United States there for for a good long while, and now you've got your hands in a lot of stuff. What kind of legacy do you want to leave with United States soccer? You know, what when all said and done, what what imprint would you 
like to have had on this sport here in, in this country? Well, I, to be fair, I, mean, I, I think I could have a far greater effect on the game in the next 10 years as opposed to the last 20. Hmm. I mean, what I was able to accomplish as a player, uh, it, it's, it's, it has its good moments, its bad moments, it's all experience that if I don't use it and I don't pass it on, it's useless. So the frustration for me has been exclusive. And the, you know, maybe people, maybe people don't like the truth. Maybe people don't like the, maybe people don't like solutions. <laughs> because if you come in with a solution, what does that mean? You probably just got 10 people fired. So those people are going to protect their jobs. So it's, it's, it's kind of a dangerous tightrope that you, that you, um, that you walk if you're a guy like me who just wants to make a difference, you kind of have to play ball if you're going to play that political game of of not saying anything uh, to make sure that people trust you enough that that they'll be able to put you in a position where you can help, but you're not going to say or do the wrong thing in the wrong moment, which if anybody's been paying attention to my career as a coach, uh, I I don't think I've had very many missteps. Yeah, absolutely. And and then just lastly, uh, t- tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Sony here. You've got a you've got a couple appearances you're making. What what's going on there? Well, I missed what you said. Uh, just with uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here with Sony. I know that you're you're making a couple appearances. Um, t- tell us a little bit about what's going on there. No, it's just it's it's cool because it's obviously Sony's massive um, um, sponsor of the World Cup. But you know, this, this is kind of a it's a little bit of their give back to the community program, which I'm a big fan of. I mean, I've been involved in L.A. and uh, I do a lot of work here in Atlanta, soccer on the streets. But Sony's doing a cool thing. They're, they're, they're really trying to remind people of what's important when it comes to this game. Get back to the game. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm always going to be a fan of. And they're going to try and sell some TVs in the process because they really do have uh, this new TV. I actually went and looked at it. i got to get one. They, uh, the new version 4K, which is, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's their, they got to get people watching uh, the World Cup on the best option that they got. So they, they, they sold me on that. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to go buy one. So pretty cool. Awesome. I'll, be, I'll actually let you know where I'll be. I'll be at the uh, Aventura Mall in Miami. I think it's off the screen. I'm not sure what the exact address is. But it, uh, that's a 3.30 to 4.00. I think 3 to 4.30 I'll be there, and then I'll also be at, uh, before that, Brand Mart, um, which is a big um, outlet for Sony. So, Sony's actually a really pretty cool company, and they've always, they've always done things the right way as far as being involved in the community and stuff. So this is a cool, cool project for me to be involved in. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Eric, again, I, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your transparency too, and uh, you know, not not being not being afraid to say it, say it like it is. And, and you know, we've we've got a lot of things to overcome uh, in, in this country, but I, I think that you have some really good insights on that. So, yeah, we just just really appreciate you sharing with us. Well, just to, just to, I'll leave you with this: if it all goes to hell, I am not going anywhere. I will be continually preparing myself to help my country any way I can. That means being the national team coach someday, I'll make sure I'm ready. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, Eric, we look forward to that. But but thank you so much again. Um, hope everything goes well with, with all the things you've got going on right now. And, you know, hopefully we'll talk yeah. to you again sometime soon. All right, so what's your, hey, what's your prediction for, for the Ghana game? What do you think? You know, I, I think it's difficult because I think, you know, obviously Ghana's been our foil for the last couple of years, but, but it's a very different Ghana team. It's a very different USA team. So I think we have a lot up in the air. I I think we can take that one for sure. I'd love to see a surprise on a team like Germany um, or Portugal. Uh, Portugal less so, I guess, would be a surprise. But it'd be great to start off on a good foot. I think I think getting a good result, um, even a draw, could do a lot to uh, to help our uh, confidence and, and take us into the rest of the group. So I, I think, like you said, the first twenty minutes are going to be really important. You know, how quickly can they compose themselves? And uh, let you know, let's use this as a good jumping off point for the confidence for the rest of the group. Yeah. I, I, I think we'll beat them three one. I like that. I would love I to see we'll, that. I think I, we'll beat them on a, on a late tackle penalty kick for us, a 
free kick, corner kick, slash, set piece, header, and a good goal for the run of play. But we will we won't go through this with a shutout. But we'll we'll get out of it three one. That's my prediction. Yeah, I mean that'd be great. Get a little revenge and uh, get, just keep on moving with you know keep that momentum going. Oh, and goal difference. It's gonna matter. I just let Germany and Portugal beat the crap out of each other. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say you know let let Germany do what they can. You know we'll let them go on that end. But but yeah, if we can, if we can pick up some good goal differential early on, I, uh, that would be oh. massive. I, it's gonna be tight. This I, game's I, gonna be ideally, tight. Ideally, Ronaldo plays against Germany. He does not laugh. Either takes a knock. Restrains that hamstring and has to sit out our game. Uh, and the rest of those guys just get a little bit too passionate and probably see some. Well, probably, I, I'd be really surprised if Portugal gets out of there without a red card. I, I think. Out of the, I, out of the Germany game? How they, qualified, how they got through Sweden on a, on a one man show. And if you take him out of the equation, it's, it's a whole new ballgame. Yeah, I, com- I completely agree. And, and, and especially if that composure is not kept. and you know, any any little bit of hiccup. And this group's going to be tight, you know, whoever moves through. You know, any point, any amount of goal differential that, that any team can pick up, I think is going to just be massive. Ideally, this is what I think, ideally, for the U.S. We win, bye, and it doesn't matter. Hmm. Because if, if, we, if we have four points, Portugal ties all three, we're going to be all right. Yeah. Do you get... As long as Ghana is just having given up completely in that last game, which could very well be the case, because uh, if they lose to us against Germany, then they're in a bad spot. I, I think, and, and geez, if Portugal loses to Germany and then ties us, I mean, we're, in a, we're in a really good spot. Yeah, so so four points would do it? I'm hoping, I'm hoping five would be better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, man, it's exciting. It's 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 a tough draw, but I think that you know, with the way that we're built, with the way that you know everything's going on with the different teams, I I, I think it's entirely possible. The, the one good thing about the group of death is it does even out a bit more. It does. There is a, a little tighter of a chance to get through. You're not going to have two teams that are just going to run away with it. Exactly. Well, and it's always a surprise. I still think. I still think I'm looking forward to see how um, Chile looks. I, I'm. I don't, I don't. I want to see that first game right off the bat with Croatia. I, they are good. I, Brazil is going to have their hands full. It, it'll be. It's going to be a good one. Mexico's got camera. It, it's a great, great start. And then you got the second. Well, the, it's the third game of the entire competition is the last final. Spain and Netherlands. So yeah, yeah, good point. For all of us, we we got some great games right off the bat. Who's your dark horse to take the tournament? Who, who could who could surprise everyone and be on the podium when all is said and done? I mean, everybody, I, I really gave me so much stick for this, but I said Uruguay last time, and I was being crazy, and I was almost right. Um, if, if Belgium can get their act together defensively, defensively, not offensively, I think offensively they have they have a couple of guys who are well poised um, to rip this tournament a new one. And, and I don't think I think he's a lot better than people think the Kaku is ridiculous. They lost the ticket, but that's not the end of the world. Even Hazard, they just have a great team. Really good team. That could really surprise some people. If, if, it, if things open up the way they think they will because of the heat, um, you know, there's going to be a little bit more space out there. And then if there's no space, people are diving in. It's, it just has all the makings of a good World Cup. For the, for the spectator, not for coaches. Coaches are going to be like losing their hair on the accelerated aging program. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do think that. The, I mean, there there are a lot of teams that just I think have a great chance of surprising a lot of people. Like you said, Belgium looks great on paper, uh, and, and they're a team that I feel like kind of as of late, you know, people took a second look at it and said, "Wow, okay, they they could really do something." Um, so so I'm hoping for it. I'm hoping for a great World Cup. I, I think we definitely have a good one in store with with what everyone can do. Well, let's just hope we stay involved for as long as we can. That's fine. I agree completely. All right, well, hey, listen, it was great talking to you. Um, anytime. Yeah, Eric, I appreciate that. Uh, love to be in touch with you soon. Again, good luck with everything, and uh, we'll, we'll talk soon, okay? Okay, man. Right. Welcome. Okay, see you, Eric.